I've restarted this video a couple of times because I don't like to stick my feet in other people's business. I just don't like to do that. Like, especially in this Nintendo community, just kind of let people cook their own stew. Like, hey, you make your own stew. I'm not going to get my grabby fingers in it. I'll make my own stew. You keep your grabby fingers out of it. You cook up what you want. I'll cook up what I want and we'll be copacetic. But there's one thing I can guarantee you is true. Nintendo YouTubers pay attention to other Nintendo YouTubers. You know how I know this? It's the same darn community. The major players in the Nintendo space have been the same major players from the beginning of the Switch to now. We know each other. It's like that side eye emoji. Like we don't really say it often. We usually don't message or make communication, but we see you. You see me. We we know what's going on. I guarantee you. There's just not there's not enough Nintendo news, there's not enough topics, there's not enough things going around that we don't pay attention to each other. Typically, we just silently, invisibly high-five and let it go. But today, I really do want to talk about RGT because this this thing he's got going on, I just think is... Ugh, it it kind of drives me crazy. Now, before I go any further, I want you to know that like RGT and I respect each other. We've messaged a few times. He invited me on the Spawncast post show. I was out of town. I'm going to try to get on there. And like, we have more in common than you might think. He loves the New York Knicks. I love the Detroit Lions. There are no two franchises more horrible to follow than those two. For the last couple decades, the Knicks haven't done anything of substance and the Lions have never done anything of substance. So we're both loyal good guys. I can tell you that just from that fact alone. And then we're probably actually the same age, or if not very, very close, because a lot of the references, a lot of the things he grew up with, very similar. We're old boys in this space, okay? Maybe I don't look like it, but I'm old, and I bet we're very, very close in age. He does Nintendo stuff every day. I do Nintendo stuff every day. Like, again, we invisibly high-five, okay? So there is no shade, no ill will. RGT and I, we are good. But this theory he's got going on right now I feel like I want to respond because I feel like it's not taking in the whole picture. All right, so RGT has made about four videos talking about the Switch showing cracks in the armor. Now, I want to be very, very honest about what RGT has said, and I'm going to start off by saying what he's not said, which is not that the Switch is failing, not that the Switch is dying, okay? I'm not going to hyperbolize here and embellish and try to make it look like he said something he didn't say. He didn't. He has just said repeatedly, that the Switch is showing cracks in its armor, demand is falling, and it's beginning to start its downturn. And if you don't agree with that, you're a fanboy, you're blind to the truth, and you're refusing to see the light of day. Now RGT has facts to back this up. But he's looking at two specific facts when there's like four or five important facts. And I want to make sure that we don't get cone vision like a Metal Gear Solid guard, and that we expand and look at the whole picture and see what's really going on. Not because I'm a fanboy, but because I think it's good to know. I think it's important to examine the entire situation. And I will say that for all the times RGT has said he doesn't want to talk about Switch Pro, I feel like this dude really wants a Switch Pro. And I don't blame him because I really want a Switch Pro. Seeing all the games this holiday season chug, it makes me want to chug a chug a choo choo straight to the next console. And I think RGT subconsciously or consciously wants that Switch Pro so bad, he's kind of like willing the Switch into steadily going down so that the Switch Pro will come out with Zelda. And I don't blame anybody because I would love the same thing, but I digress. Let's get into what RGT has focused on, which is two specific data points. One being the week of October 24th to October 30th in Japan. That week, according to Famitsu, the PlayStation 5 beat Nintendo Switch in sales. Now it barely beat it by a couple thousand units, but it still did beat it, fact. Nintendo Switch lost to PlayStation 5, which is notable because Nintendo typically dominates the marketplace in Japan. Now, the new data point is that in the October NPDs, Matt Piscatella posted that PlayStation 5 was number one, Xbox was number two, and Nintendo Switch, therefore, must be number three. That's in terms of both dollars sold, because yeah, the PlayStation's more expensive, right? But it's also in terms of units sold. So straight up, Nintendo was third. Now, Nintendo is rarely third, and RGT points out how the PlayStation 5 has the excuse of God of War, and that's the biggest release the PlayStation 5 has had yet. It's the game that most people have anticipated highly, a game that will sell double-digit million copies easily, a game that is freaking fantastic and going to be up for Game of the Year pretty much everywhere. 
So it makes sense that PS5 would succeed. But then he goes on to say that Xbox, why would it succeed? Why isn't Nintendo succeeding? They had Bayonetta. They had Mario and Rabbids. And, okay, so here's where it starts to fall apart, because first off, Bayonetta and Mario Rabbids just, like, they're great games, but they just aren't huge heavy sellers. God of War is. And you know what's a huge heavy seller on the Xbox? Call of Duty! You know what came out in October? Call of Duty! Do you know that Modern Warfare 2 is selling insanely fast at rates that even su surpass many past Call of Duties? Do you know what else came out in October? Gotham Knights! Gotham Knights, a much bigger IP Batman than Bayonetta. Sorry to say, I know the whole voice actor debacle really brought some shine to Bayonetta, but nowhere near as much as Batman is Dead and the Court of Owls and multiplayer Gotham. So there's your explanation for Xbox. But this isn't even where I want to focus. I want to focus on two other data points, all right? Two other data points, because the data that a lot of people have been rebuking RGT with is that Nintendo is holding back systems. And RGT keeps pointing out that the store shelves are stocked. Anytime he goes, he sees them. Anytime Spawnwave goes, he sees them. There's no shortage because the systems are all there. Okay, I'm not gonna argue that. That's very true. I'm gonna bring up different data. Not about them holding back systems for Pokemon, although I don't know how their shipment situation is. I've seen reports that perhaps they aren't able to ship as many units to meet demand. I, you never really know the truth. Who do you trust in that front? But we can trust some straight up numbers because RGT is using numbers. I'm gonna show you some more numbers. All right, I'm gonna bounce you back to September 5th through September 11th. This is the week that Splatoon 3 came out in Japan. All right, this is the week where the Switch sold nearly 200,000 units. All right, to put this in perspective, the big PS5 win week that RGT is focused on, the PlayStation 5 sold approximately 40,000 units. If we go back to Splatoon, the Switch sold four to five times as many. Cracks in the armor or an off week? You be the judge. That week, the PlayStation 5 sold under 3,000. September 5th through September 11th, 3,000 PlayStation 5s. So add these two weeks together, where PlayStation 5 sold 3,000 plus 40,000, roughly 43,000, and the Switch sold like 37,000 plus 180,000, and again, we're at like a five or six times multiplier. Now maybe Nintendo peaked, and they're gonna go down from here. The cracks in the armor are really breaking, but alas, despite the Switch having 114 million units out there, and despite it seeming like Nintendo couldn't go any higher, they've got big games. They still have their biggest games. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, maybe a new Mario Kart, Metroid Prime 4. There is a lot of heavy hitters still coming, and, and don't forget games like Fire Emblem Engage that are dropping in freaking January, a nothing month, all of a sudden bringing in a huge seller. So I take you to this past week in Japan, another data point for you, straight up numbers. No games have come out this week. Nothing really of substance for Nintendo, definitely nothing of substance for Xbox, and PlayStation 5, right? They probably already peaked with God of War. Maybe they have some trickle down. This is October 31st through November 6th in Japan. And the sales, as you can see, are back to Switch on fire. Now, PlayStation 5, to be fair, had a bit of an uptick. All right, they sold about 13K. But guys and girls, the Switch is like at 100K. Okay, we're talking about a nine times multiplier. So we have one week and one month where the PlayStation 5 did awesome. And we can attribute that to God of War Ragnarok, probably the most anticipated Sony release of this generation, and then Call of Duty, like the biggest franchise in the freaking world outside of PC titles and outside of free-to-play. So you got Call of Duty pumping up the Xbox, you got God of War pumping up the PlayStation, and Nintendo, despite Mario and Rabbids and Bayonetta, just sort of sat the month out without anything substantial for themselves. Oh, but wait, Pokemon's coming. And as we ramp up to Pokemon, look who's ramping back up. The Switch is approaching 100,000 units sold again this month, showing that that off week is nothing but an anomaly. Showing that the off month is nothing but an anomaly. And whether you want to believe it's because they're holding back stock, players are waiting for Pokemon, or any other reason out there in the deep blue sea, I just want to show that straight up data does prove that the cracks in the armor aren't really there. Maybe the Switch is slowing down like just straight up like it's slowing down because so many people have it. But I still think that the Switch is going to be a humongous seller this holiday season. And I do not think that the data presented is the reason or even shows or even reveals or even proves or even is accurately depicting that the Switch is starting to chink apart. All right. Its armor is starting to go chink, chink, chink. Psh, no, it's just not. The Switch, in fact, is probably going to have a huge uptick 
because it does in the holiday season. Pokemon will cause that. And then we've got Zelda around the corner. You're going to see Nintendo Switch do this again. And it's already showing because it did this for Splatoon, crushing the competition, dipped, and now it's already on its way back up. Let's see how many units are sold during the Pokemon week. Let's see how many of those Pokemon OLEDs are sold. Let's see how many people pick up a Switch just to play Pokemon this holiday season or grab an extra bundle for a friend or a relative, pick up a light to give to their kiddo. We'll have to wait and see, but I'm betting you that this is just a mere blip in the radar. And I've shown in other videos that Nintendo Switch lost other months as well. In fact, it lost last year early on to PlayStation 5. The entire month, Switch did lose out to PS5. Did the Switch show cracks in its armor? Did it have a terrible year? No, the Switch has continued to dominate and continue to be in first place. There will come a time where the Switch does start to decline. There will come a time where Nintendo does start to run out of people to sell it to. Personally, I hope that time comes kind of soon because I think we do need a Switch Pro. I think we really need a Switch Pro as an option, not as a mandatory, but as an option for players that do want some more performance. But again, love your RGT, respect you, Nick's Lions, we get each other. The Switch is not really showing cracks in the armor. The Switch is not really slowing down. There are two specific data points that make the Switch look bad, and they haven't really had a huge game since Splatoon when, oh, they absolutely annihilated the competition with nearly 200,000 units sold, and just wait, because Pokemon's probably gonna do just as well, or maybe better in certain parts of the world. So there you have it, all right? It's kind of a conspiracy theory going wild. I just don't find it to be accurate. And, and I see people like, being called fanboys. I see people being called like that they just love Nintendo too much. And that honestly is another issue in the YouTube Nintendo space where like you kind of are like, you know, you, you, you can't win. So if you criticize Nintendo, like you, you, you don't really care about them. And if you love Nintendo, you're a fanboy. And sometimes the reverse, like there's never a right thing. Either you're too critical, you're not critical enough. You believe in them too much. You don't believe in them enough. That has to kind of stop. And I would love to sort of not really invoke the the discourse and the discussion about like oh this fanboy nonsense because it seems to be a bigger problem with nintendo in terms of like this video space i know there's a lot of playstation xbox fanboys that have it out on twitter and, and other places probably facebook i don't know real life but in the youtube space i feel like this idea of like you're damned if you do and damned if you don't with nintendo is kind of weird so i did not make this to try and champion nintendo because i need them to succeed like they do that with or without me. I just, I don't know. I spend a lot of time reading information. I spend a lot of time going over stuff and I rarely tweet and I rarely comment because I just don't have the time or desire for it. But this one, I was like, dude, like the Switch is doing bonkers. And it's strange to me that a group of notable YouTubers are like riding with this theory that the Switch is everywhere and it's not selling out and blah, blah, blah. When we straight up have data surrounding the data they're cherry picking to show that like, Switch is doing fine. God of War and Call of Duty. That's all you need to know. God of War and Call of Duty versus Bayonetta. No shade, Miss Bayonetta. I know you got beautiful moves, but God of War and Call of Duty versus Bayonetta. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. The numbers speak for themselves. I mean, I don't really know how you can argue this at all. The Switch had a down week and apparently a down month, and now it's on the upswing and Pokemon is going to take over the world like it always does. So no worries for the big end. Furukawa is probably sitting on a couch made of money and he's going to feed his puppies money flavored biscuits for the holiday season and he's probably going to get like rolls royces for his grandkids i don't know i feel like nintendo just prints money this generation and i don't see it slowing down because their next six months include pokemon fire emblem kirby maybe a metroid maybe gba on nintendo switch online and then Tears of the Kingdom, which is going to rock the world. Oh, by the way, there's a Mario movie, there's a Mario theme park, and there's probably a Mario game. Nintendo is going to make more money in the next year. It's just, it's just going to be crazy, all right? So the cracks in the armor are actually them patching back up, actually them strengthening, and that's all I got to say, all right? Thank you so much for watching. Appreciate you. Appreciate you as well, RGT. I know you'll probably see this video, like I said, all low. Shout out to the Knicks. Shout out to my Lions. Hopefully those teams, one day before we die, can win something. And, you know, I'll, I'll be on that Spawncast after show as soon as we can work it out. In the meantime, though, thank you so much, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive out there. Love you all lots. Switch Force, out.